So I've just rotated the model around, so we're now looking at a plantar view, so we're looking at the inferior surface of the foot. Um, so I'll just remove away the plantar aponeurosis and we'll take a look at some of the muscles in the um, plantar group of muscles. So in the plantar group, you've got four different layers. So you've got um, this first layer, which is the most superficial layer, um, and then three other layers, which I'll come on to talk about. So these muscles um, form a lot of the soft tissue bulk that you can feel in the foot. So I'll start with the central muscle. So there's three muscles in this first group. So you've got the flexor digitorum brevis muscle, you've got the abductor hallucis, and the abductor digiti minimi. So right in the middle here, we've got the um, flexor digitorum brevis muscle. So this originates on the calcaneus, on the medial process of the calcaneus, and it forms four tendons, which um, insert onto the um, middle phalanx of the lateral four digits. So it inserts um, on the sides of the middle phalanges of the lateral four digits. So just like in the hand, you've got the flexor digitorum superficialis and the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. So in the hand, the flexor digitorum superficialis splits and it inserts on the middle phalanges and it allows the deeper tendon, the flexor digitorum profundus, to pass through. So it's exactly the same in the foot. So the flexor digitorum brevis muscle, which is this muscle here, is um, analogous to the flexor digitorum superficialis So it, because it's the, it's the superficial muscle. And then it splits um, and inserts on the sides of the medial of the middle phalanx to allow the deeper tendon, so the flexor digitorum longus muscle, to pass through. So the flexor digitorum longus is analogous to the flexor digitorum profundus because it's the deep tendon. So what this muscle does is that it flexes the lateral four digits at the proximal interphalangeal joint. So this muscle is innervated by the medial plantar nerve. So just lateral, sorry, medial to the, this muscle, we've got this muscle. This is the abductor hallucis. So you can feel this in your foot. It makes up a lot of the bulk that you can feel in the medial side of your foot. So this originates on the medial process of the um, calcaneal tuberosity, and it inserts at the base, it inserts medially on, at the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe. So this muscle can flex the, um, the great toe at the MTP joint, and it also obviously abducts at the MTP joint, as the name suggests. So the third muscle of the first um, first layer is this muscle here, the abductor digiti minimi. So this muscle sits laterally and it abducts the little toe at the MTP joint. So this has got a, an origin on the lateral side of the calcaneal tuberosity. And it also stretches across to the medial process. So it originates on the medial and the lateral process um, of the calcaneal tuberosity. So it's got quite a large origin. And then it runs forward and it inserts um, at the base of the proximal phalanx laterally. So it abducts the little toe at the MTP joint. So it brings the little toe away from the middle. So the abductor digiti minimi muscle is innervated by the lateral plantar nerve, um, and the abductor hallucis um, is innervated by the medial plantar nerve. So those are the three muscles of the first layer. So just a quick note about um, abduction and adduction in the foot. So in the foot, abduction and adduction are defined in relation to a longitudinal axis that runs through the second digit. So abduction is movement, any movement away from this axis, and adduction is any movement towards this axis. This is the same as in the hand. So abduction and adduction are defined relative to a midline that runs through the middle digit. So abduction is movement away from this line, and adduction is movement towards this line. So it's just to clear up any confusion that might arise, because when we talk about abduction and adduction in the rest of the body, we talk about it in relation to um, a central midline that runs through the centre of the body. So abduction is movement away from this central midline, and adduction is movement towards this. So in the foot and hand, there are, the foot and hand have their own midlines. So next we've got the second layer of muscle. So I'll just remove the superficial layer, and we'll take a look at those. So immediately deep to the to the first layer, you've got the extensor digitorum longus tendon. So this is the tendon which passes through the flexor digitorum brevis and it inserts distally on the lateral four phalanges. So um, the muscles of the second layer are related to this tendon because they lie at the same level of this tendon. So we've only got two muscles in this layer, it's quite an easy layer. So in layer two, we've got two muscles. In layer three, we've got three muscles. So in this second layer, we've got the quadru quadratus plantae and we've got the lumbricals. So the quadratus plantae muscle is this muscle here, which lies posteriorly. So it's got these two heads, as you can see. It's got a medial and a lateral head. So the lateral head originates on the lateral process of the calcaneus, calcaneal tuberosity, and the medial head um, originates medially on the calcaneus. So this, these two heads form this tendon, which inserts onto the lateral side of the flexor digitorum longus tendon. So you can see it attaching to the tendon here. So because of its attachment on this tendon, um, it actually just helps this tendon to flex the lateral toe, so toes two to five. Um, so this muscle is actually innervated by the lateral plantar nerve. So that's the quadratus plantar muscle. So next we've got the lumbrical muscles. So we've got four lumbricals. So just like in the hand, the lumbrical muscles originate from the sides of this tendon. So this is the uh, flexor digitorum longus, and in the hand, they originate from the sides of the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. So just like I mentioned before, the profundus muscle is analogous to the, extent, uh, the flexor digitorum longus muscle. So we've got these four lumbricals. So the first lumbrical originates from the medial side um, of this tendon um, to the second toe. So the, this um, only has one origin, whereas the other three actually originate from the adjacent sides. So these are um, bipennate muscles, so they have two, two sort of um, they have two sets of fibres which converge onto the central tendon. So they originate from the adjacent sides of the flexor digitorum longus tendons, um, and they then insert onto the extensor hood of these uh, lateral four digits. So because of their um, insertion onto the extensor expansions, they actually can flex the MTP joint while um, extending the interphalangeal joints. So the lumbrical muscles are innervated by the um, medial and lateral plantar nerves. So the, the first lumbrical is innervated by the um, medial plantar nerve, and the other three lumbricals are innervated by the lateral plantar nerve. So that kind of makes sense. So those are the two muscles you have in the second layer. So remember, second layer, two muscles, third layer, three muscles. So I'll come on to talk about the next layer now. So I'll just remove away the um, second layer, and we'll take a look at the third layer. 
So the three muscles you have in the third layer are associated with the little toe and the big toe. So with the little toe, you've got the flexor, digiti, minimi, brevis. And uh, related to the big toe, you've got the adductor, hallucis, and you've got the flexor, hallucis, brevis. So first we'll just take a look at this medial muscle, so the flexor hallucis brevis muscle. So you can see it here lying underneath this tendon. So this tendon uh, runs inferiorly to this muscle, and it's the tendon of the flexor hallucis longus muscle. So the flexor hallucis brevis muscle is quite interesting because it's got two, two origins and two sort of heads where it inserts. So you can see one origin on this bone. So this is the lateral, one of the lateral tarsal bones, so it's the cuboid bone. Um, and this tendon here is the tendon of the tibialis posterior muscle. So the medial side of the flexor hallucis brevis muscle actually originates on the tendon of the tibialis posterior muscle, and laterally you've got this orig origin on the uh, cuboid bone. So then anteriorly, where the um, or distally where this muscle inserts, it actually has two heads. So this is shown a little bit short of where it actually inserts because this is still the, the end of the metatarsal, so the head of the metatarsal. This muscle actually inserts medially and laterally on the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe. So it kind of like it's shown with its two heads here, so it's splitting um, medially and laterally, but it actually inserts a bit further up on the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe. So this muscle is innervated by the medial plantar nerve, and it, uh, its function is to flex the big toe at the MTP joint. So next we've got the adductor hallucis muscle. So we've got this in hand as well, so it's exactly the same. It's got a transverse head and an oblique head. So the transverse head runs horizontally across the foot, and it originates on the um, deep transverse metatarsal ligament. So you can see this ligament here running across the MTP joint. So it originates on the um, deep transverse metatarsal ligament and the plantar ligaments of these lateral three toes, and then it inserts at the base of the proximal phalanx. So again, for some reason, it's shown a little bit out of place, so it's shown inserting on the metatarsal, whereas it obviously inserts at the base of the proximal phalanx, so a bit further up here. Um, and then you've got the oblique head, so it's called the oblique head because the fibres are angled obliquely. So this, this muscle originates um, on the basis of metatarsals 2 to 4, so these um, metatarsal 2, 3 and 4, um, and it also has an origin on this tendon here. So if you remember um, from my tools, this tendon is the tendon of the perineus longus, or the fibularis longus, so it enters the foot laterally and crosses over underneath the cuboid bone to insert medially on the foot. So the oblique head of the adductor hallucis muscle originates on the tendon, this tendon, and also the basis of metatarsals 2 to 4, and it, it inserts at the base of the proximal phalanx of the great toe. So as the name suggests, this muscle adducts the great toe at the MTP joint, and both these muscles are innervated by the lateral plantar nerve. So finally, we've got this muscle here, this little muscle, the flexor digiti minimi brevis. So this just actually means the flexor of the, um, the small flexor of the smallest toe. So as you can see, it originates on the base of the fifth metatarsal, and it inserts um, laterally on the base of the proximal phalanx of the little toe. So it flexes the little toe, and this, this is innervated by the lateral uh, plantar nerve. So this muscle also originates, like, like the um, oblique head, of the adductor hallucis. This muscle actually also has an origin on the tibialis, sorry, the um, fibularis longus tendon. So this tendon is um, shown slightly proximal to where it should be. So you've got this groove here on the cuboid bone. So th this tendon actually runs more like this um, in, in this plane. So th this flexor digiti minimi brevis muscle also originates on the perineus or fibularis longus tendon. So those are the three muscles of the third layer of the plantar group. So hopefully you're seeing some similarities to the muscles of the hand now. So remember my analogy to the flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus with the flexor digitorum brevis and uh, flexor digitorum longus, and some of the muscles I've talked about uh, just now are similar to the muscles of the thenar and hypothenar remnant um, in hand, but you don't have an opponent's muscle. So you've got the you've got the flexors and the abductors of the great toe, but there's no opponent's muscle in the foot. And you've also got an adductor of the great toe, which is similar to the muscles in the hand. And you've got lumbricals, which are similar because they originate on the um, tendon of the extensor digit digitorum longus muscle, which is uh, analogous to the flexor digitorum profundus muscle. So by looking at these kind of similarities, it makes learning about these muscles a little bit easier. So I'll just remove these muscles of the third layer, and we can look at the fourth and final layer, and this is an easy layer because it just includes the interosseous muscles, so you've got the plantar and dorsal interosseous muscles. So just like in the hand, the function of the interossei muscles can be remembered with the mnemonic pad and dab, so plantar adduct, adduct, and uh, dorsal abduct. So I've just isolated the interosseous muscles, so we've got uh, plantar and dorsal interosseous muscles, so the plantar interosseous muscles um, lie inferior to the dorsal inter interosseous muscles, so you've got three plantar interosseous muscles, so there's an additional one shown here which um, doesn't exist, so you've got three plantar interosseal muscles, which originate on one side of metatarsals 3 to 5. So this is 3, 4, and 5, and they originate medially on the sides of these metatarsals. So these uh, plantar interosseal muscles are unipennate, so they only originate on one side of the metatarsals. And then they insert um, at the base of the proximal phalanges of digits 3 to 5, and also on the extensor expansions of these digits. So you can see, because of their insertion medially, they will adduct these three, um, these three digits, so they'll bring it closer towards the midline of the foot. So the plantar interosseal muscles are innervated by the lateral plantar nerve. So I'll just get rid of the plantar interosseal muscles, and we can see the final set of muscles, the dorsal interosseal muscles. So there, there are four dorsal interosseal muscles, and these are a little bit different because they're bipennate muscles, so they originate on the on both sides of the metatarsals. So you can see here you've got uh, uh, dorsal interosseous muscle 2, 3, and 4 attaching laterally on the uh, basis of proximal phalanges 2 to, two to 4. So this will uh, cause the, these bones to be abducted at the MTP joint. And then you've got this fourth one, so you don't have four plantar interosseal muscles. So this, this first dorsal interosseous muscle um, inserts medially, so 
the second toe can be abducted either side. Um, so the dorsal interosseous muscles um, abduct the uh, digits two to four, um, and they're innervated by the lateral plantar nerve. But you've also got um, the first two dorsal interosseous muscles innervation, receiving innervation from the deep fibular nerve. So those are the those are the muscles, the intrinsic muscles of the foot. There's quite a lot to learn there, but the anatomy is quite similar in some respects to the anatomy of the hand. Um, and a lot of anatomy is logically named, and if you think about it logically, it, it becomes easier to remember. So I hope that has made things a bit easier for you to learn.